Jesus. This morning, I'm just going to remind us on why Jesus Christ was born. Why Jesus Christ was born. Sometimes we, we forget. A lot of people have forgotten the, the corporate, uh, the, the companies have us, have us forgotten because they think Christmas is the time to sell their things. The third quarter of the year is when they miss Christmas sales, they miss it. They don't, they don't joke with it. They take time to plan for it. And they do all that is possible to make a lot of money in that, in that period. But Christmas is not about money. And it's not about the gifts that are passed out. No, it's good to give gifts, but it's not about that. And you find a lot of people, they are, they are kind of uh, depressed because they didn't get gifts uh, or they didn't have money to buy gifts or people didn't give them what they wanted. But it's not about that. Uh, and emphasis would not be on that. It's all about Jesus. Say it's all about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about God becoming man and dwelling among us. God became man and dwelt among us. And he went on, as we know, to die for us. I always say, you know, I always say uh, in, uh, in appreciating what the Lord has done for us, I used to work for, I used to work for, just turn it down. I used to work for an American company. It's called Union Carbide in Nigeria. It's an American company. I think they are, somewhere in uh, in florida they are head of this they are the ones that make ever ready batteries you know ever ready batteries so we had that and they, they used to we, we we it was an american company but in the company the only american there was the md other production people came from either India or, or Ghana. The reason is that, okay, there's an American, or there was an American, Hussein Alavi, that was his name. But he's an, he was, I don't know whether he's still existing, he's still alive. But he was an Iran, Iranian. He wasn't originally American. And the reason is Americans won't come to Nigeria was because it was a lowly place. They didn't want to, they said you can't pay them anything to come at that time. And they were so, that they were very expensive because you know they will come with insurance, they will come with, uh, there was one, another one, F.T. Wood, he was uh, African American. I think he came for only six months. Anyway, the point I'm making is nobody, no American will come uh, because the, 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 the cost to the company was too much. And so, and the company don't, don't want to pay that because it, it was very expensive. And so they would not come. But imagine God leaving heaven and coming on earth. You know that that was a great sacrifice. Coming alone. And coming as a, as a baby, as born, and then lived here, and then walked the earth, went everywhere on foot. God, who created lightning, his angels, they are like that. But now he limited himself in man and dwelt among us. We should appreciate that. Should appreciate that. If you invite Big Gates to come to your house, I don't think he will come. He won't come to mine. <laughs> he won't come to mine. 
you know. But so you, we can see how much God loves us. And he came to save us. So in the, in the passage that we read, you will find one major reason why he came. That's uh, mm -hmm. the passage that we just read, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Mm -hmm. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So you see, the reason he came is so that he can save us from our sins. And his name is Jesus. Jesus means Savior. So his name is Savior. Another place, they, uh, they call his name, we shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God dwelling with us. Emmanuel means God dwelling with us. So you find that major reason there in Matthew one twenty one, And in Luke 2, 11, he said, for unto us, child, unto us is born this day in the, in the city of David, a savior. Say a savior. Yes. So we, we must see that and we must appreciate that and we must uh, absorb that into our being. That that is the reason why he came and make sure that he has fulfilled that purpose and be sure that he has fulfilled that purpose in our lives. That he, we are saved and he is our savior. You know, when you read Ephesians, it talks about the helmet of salvation. That is being sure that you are saved no matter what it is that you are saved. It, doesn't, it means more than saved and going to heaven. Yes, it is. But that in whatever situation you find yourself, know that salvation is for you, deliverance is for you, the power of God is working for you, he has died for you, he has saved you. And that gives you confidence always, confidence for living. For unto you is born in this day, in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. In John 1, 29, you remember John was introducing Jesus Christ. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not only our sin, but it's the sin of the world. But most of the world do not know that he has taken their sins away. And that is our responsibility to make them, to make it known to them. If they don't tell them, they won't know. And it's we who can tell them. The rest of the world cannot tell them. And as I'm telling you what he has done for us, I want you to know two things. One, our responsibility in embracing what he has done for us, and then our responsibility in proclaiming what he has done for us to the world. We meet people every day who are bound by sin and they can be delivered only by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are tired. They don't know any other way, but Jesus Christ died for them too. In uh, 1, John, 1 John 2, I write these things unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who has died for us and not who is been made the propitiation for our sin, not only for us, but for also the rest, the whole world. So he's been made the propitiation for sin, the sacrifice for sin for the whole world. We must know that. We must embrace that and we must proclaim that. John 3 17, for God sent for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. A lot of us condemn people. We, we, are, not, we are not judges. We are proclaimers of the world, of the word of God. 
Our, we are not to condemn them. He's going to hell. He cannot be saved. He cannot be. That guy's life is finished. No, that is not our job. This, Jesus Christ did not come to do that. He came to save. And he came to, to save us and be made uh, the sacrifice for our sins. And so the rest of the world has to know that. And that is our responsibility. And we have to know that also. Jesus, in his life, you, you, you will see that he was, he attracted sinners to himself. To himself. He was pure. We stand aloof from people today. That, that's not what Jesus Christ did. We don't go in to partake in their sin, but we can relate with them so that they can see the, the life we live and be, uh, and be taken into it. Understand it as we proclaim the gospel to them, as we demonstrate the life of Christ to them. The Bible says, we, the, uh, the Apostle says, say we are this, the, 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 the scripture that people are reading. And if they are reading us wrongly, if we are reading, they are reading us as unfriendly. I understand it was Martha, Martha Gandhi who said that he, he loves Jesus, but not Christians. He would have liked to see the, the Christ of the Christians. But we, because we are not demonstrating that, the love of God that came down for us because of his love. So you see him uh, bringing sinners close to himself. And none of them, most of them who came to him did not go as they came. Did not go away as they came. Because he was holy and he was able to influence them. They were able to see themselves compared in him. I told you the story of a man of God. Smith Wigglesworth was his name. Or oh, is his name. Still his name. There hasn't been, there hasn't been any other one. He was a man used of God immensely in the, I think, the early uh, the early 30s. I, I believe. I don't know when he died. But it's a, it's a long time ago. This man was mightily used of God both in the U.S. and in the in U.K. He was actually uh, based in the U.K., but he, he traveled. At that time, they used to travel on the steam engine. There were no planes or something. But he traveled a lot between uh, the two uh, continents. And they said one day he was he was in a in a train. The train was moving, and there was a father, a reverend father, you know, dressed in white and cassock, you know, holy man of God. And Wigglesworth came into the court, into the coach, and the man saw him. The man saw him, he was so afraid that he moved away. And he moved away into another coach. The spirit of the Lord told Smith, Smith to follow him. So he followed him. He went to the same coach. He left and went to the next coach. Spirit of God said, follow him. He said he followed him. He went to, he went to the, after some time, following him around, the, the man, the Pope, or oh, not the Pope, the priest, the Catholic priest broke down. Why are you following me? You are so holy. I can't stand in your presence. He was carrying so much of the presence of God that the man recognized himself as a sinner. And that's, that's possible with us. He's a human being. Remember Jesus Christ and Peter? Get away from me. Peter was Peter. Go away from me. I'm a, sin, I'm, a, I'm a sinful man. And that's the holiness of God exuding through man. And that's what we can do. That's what's possible. When we don't join them in, their, in the rubbish that they are doing, they will, they will, they will know. There are some, we can't we can jest the way they are jesting. We can't say the same things they are saying. Even if they are saying it, we can't laugh at the way they, they are laughing at it. That means we are agreeing with them. But a lot of times we don't separate ourselves. We talk like them. We dance like them. We, we live like them. And so they don't see the difference. But we must begin to 
live like Christ. Say, live like Christ. And he ate with sinners. You know, my man, Levi, Levi was even, Levi, you know, uh, in uh, Luke 5, 27 to 32. After these things, he went forth and saw a publican. A publican is, co is a collector of, uh, of uh, public revenue. Jews hated publicans. There were two of them here. Jews hated them because they collected money for, for, the, for, the, for the Romans. And what, what will happen is, just like you, you are familiar with it, if you had custom friends, if government say that the duty is uh, $20, custom will collect uh, $40 and give, <laughs> and give uh, government $10. They will say that uh, it is up container, you know. It's what they write, you know. So they were extremely very rich people. But the, the Romans didn't, can you please shut down for us? The, 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 the people were, they didn't like them. Because one, they were collecting money for their oppressors. And secondly, they were collecting money to enrich themselves. And they didn't like them. But here was Jesus Christ, named, you say, Levi, Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Would you take, will you ask a sinner to follow you? He was sure his life would not be the same again. And you know that the Levi's life, I think that was, uh, that was Matthew. This is Matthew, because they come in Levi here. So his life will never be the same again. He, he called him and he left all and rose up and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others uh, that sat down with them. So he called the rest of their, their fellow people. <laughs> uh, come, come. But the scribes and Pharisees, that's the religious people of the day, the same people, set of people that killed Jesus Christ, that nailed him to the cross, the same set of people that criticized him all over, went to him, they are not following the law, they are not washing your hands, they are not... The same set of people, they murmured against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, they, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So he came to call sinners to repentance. Remember, we are talking at, about our salvation. He is our Savior. So that's the purpose he came, to call sinners to repentance and that's also our purpose too to call sinners to repentance not to judge them not to condemn them but to call them to repentance and everywhere you see him forgiving people the forgiving people when they brought the man on the the invalid on the pallet to him those guys that uh, were brought on the roof before he healed him said Thy sin, son, your sins are forgiven thee. He didn't hold his sins against them. You no, know, as I say these things, the application to it is that God is not holding your sins against you. A lot of times, uh, Satan deceives us. He says it's because of something you did 20 years ago. That's why God is not answering you. That's a lie. Say that's a lie. That's a lie. He says your sins and your iniquities, I will remember no more. If it's remember, it means that you, that's, that, that passage is not true. But let God be true. His word is true. So don't, don't let the, those lies deceive you. Because God has forgiven. He forgave this man and, and went on to, to heal him. And went on to heal him. He forgave him. The man didn't even ask for forgiveness of sins, but he forgave him because that is, it would, God, I was reading some, I think one psalm, I don't know, one, say, it's plenteous in mercy. 
It's, it's we, people that are not merciful. But God is plenteous in mercy. Say God is plenteous in mercy. God is plenteous in mercy. It's, it's, it's mercy. And it's, it's mercy is from generation to generation. His mercy is everlasting. When they brought the woman caught in adultery to him, they said, the Lord says, stone him, let him die. But because he came to save us from our sins, they so told the people, he that has no sin, let him cast the first stone. And none of them, and they thought about it. And I mean, as, 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 as church going as holy as we think, there's no one that is without sin. And so don't let us go condemning, get condemning people, killing them, throwing stones at them. Because Jesus Christ did not. And he asked the people, yeah, when they had all gone, he asked them, has no one condemned you? Say no. Say, I too, I don't condemn you. You go. But you don't sin anymore. Say, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. We can do that because Christ has said it. If it, it's in the power of his word. The Bible even says in Romans, said, sin has no, shall have no dominion over me. Sin has, say sin, sin. has no dominion has no over me. Before, when we were not saved, yeah, sin had dominion over us. We didn't know any other thing but to sin. But now we have Christ living in us, the Holy Spirit living in us, and we are not bound by sin. If we sin, it's because we choose to sin. We choose to disobey the Spirit of God in us. And because we are not bound to sin, because sin has no dominion over you, then you begin to feel condemned, you begin to feel sad. You are. And before, whatever we do, we did. But now you cannot just do anything and think it's, it, it's okay. Once you do it, you will know that if you are a child of God, you will know. And then you will repent. And then Christ forgives. But if you don't repent, you can't forgive. Repenting means agreeing with him. Confessing means agreeing with him. That that's, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That all even means the ones that you don't know you know, there, we, we, there, there are levels of our knowledge. There are some things that we do not know, but it is sin. But as we confess the one we know, he cleanses us from the one that we don't know. So, so that he's always seeing us as just, as holy, just like his son. You remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus in 19, Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, he, which was the chief among the publicans. He was uh, Levi's uh, senior. Something like that. He was, he was very, the Bible says he was, he was rich. I think King James says he was very rich. King James, I think that's what, I don't know which version, version I have. Yet. But I think King James says he was very rich. If the Bible says somebody was very rich, he must be very rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because of his little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. You can see his desire to see Jesus was very great. Remember, he was a rich man. But he put aside his riches and his pride and climbed a tree. You know who climbs trees? I don't think I've ever climbed a tree to go look at, to go see anybody. But he must be very serious about seeing Jesus Christ. And he did whatever it was. And Christ saw his heart. How do you think? He said, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. What a honor. Jesus Christ, publican, that people didn't 
if we were the scribes and the Pharisees, then that Zacchaeus was destined for hell. But because he came to save, to seek and to save those who are lost. And so that must be our, our motive always. Talk to people. Bring them into the kingdom of God. So I was reading something. There are Christians who have never talked to somebody about, being, about, being, about their salvation. There are Christians who will never have somebody that they brought to heaven because they talked with him. There are many Christians like that. But it's for every one of us. If we have received salvation, to give salvation to other people. And then, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest, to be guest with a man that is a sinner. See, they didn't, they didn't want him. They, when they saw him, as the Pharisees, the scribes, the people, And Zacchaeus stood and said, now Zacchaeus was, was, uh, was his, his heart was contrite. He was, he, he now knew that he was a sinner because of the presence of Christ, because of the love that Christ showed to him. If he had passed him by, he wouldn't have known. Don't let us pass people by, condemn them to hell. Let's help them. Do whatever you can to help them. It's not by sticking Christ, uh, you know, the way a lot of people do it, they say, if you don't go take Christ today, you will go to hell. No, that's not the way. Show him love. Show him that you care. Jesus Christ showed that he cared. He stopped. He looked up. He knew he was there. He was surprised that Christ knew. Christ, he knows everybody. If it's a homeless person, a lot of people condemn homeless people. But do you know that a lot of them is just a one, one paycheck or two paychecks and they lost their homes? Or some have lost their businesses, that's why they're there. Or some were just sick and they spent all their money to, to pay their medical bills and they didn't have enough. But a lot of times we just condemn them and say it's because they are, they are smoking crack. You give them money, they'll go and use it to smoke crack. Give them money. Let's do your own part. <laughs> Let God be the judge with him, what he spent the money to do. He don't, he don't judge that. Give, give him. The Bible says give to them who ask you. That's why I find it difficult to refuse people. Didn't you read that in the Bible? Jesus Christ said it. I think it was Jesus Christ who said it. Give, it. give to them anyone who asks you. If they ask you. You see, before somebody can ask you something, he has uh, brought himself low. I, 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 can, I don't usually ask things for, from people. But, before, but when I ask, I expect. Well, I've thought about it. And I expect. And so a lot of times I'm disappointed when I don't get. When I don't get it because I was expecting. And so a lot of people, when they ask you, they give them if you have. And if you don't have, go look for it. Go look for it. And if you think that they will, they say they want to. They are scammers. I've, you know, here there are a lot of people come around here. I've said, I've seen some people tell me they want to buy gas for their car, and I tell them there's a gas station there. I will follow you and buy the gas for you. They will say no. Here I have seen a lot of people like that. There, there, isn't that the gas station there? They said they want to. They, are, they want to go to Dallas two times like that, and they are ladies. There was one, you know. There are many around here. I came and uh, wanted to buy 
He said he didn't have food in, uh, in his house, in her house, and she has a baby. I said, there's Koga there. Let's go to Koga. Buy whatever you want. Don't, just whatever you want. But she was considerate. She would pick some things, and after, how much did she buy? Less than $20. Yeah. And she was asking, is this okay, sir? Is this? I said, don't worry. Just pick whatever you want. And she was trying to justify whatever she got, which means she really needed it. You know? She, and it was food that she bought. So there are people like that, and we must, we must, uh, we must help them. <laughs> Only last, was it Sunday? One guy came as we were packing, you know, and uh, wanted specifically twenty dollars for for his uh, for gas. I said, "Go bring the car. I will buy. <laughs> I will buy gas for you." He said, "The car is in the apartment. He trekked here." So I said, "Okay, okay take twenty dollars." I don't know what he will use it for, but there are people who need help. We cannot not help them. And that was the day I was in a, in a collar. So you will say, Pastor did it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe that was the reason he came, this guy in collar. He must, <laughs> he must demonstrate the love of Christ. And then, you know, he's, he's also Asian. And my wife was saying, Asians don't usually beg for money. So he must be, he must, he must be in need. So, what I'm saying is, let's, let's help people. In the process of helping them, we can show them the love of Christ. But if we ignore them, ignore them, uh, uh, then we cannot, we cannot show love to them. We cannot show love to them. Like the guy who broke into this place, they said they was homeless. I said all he had to do was wait until we came in the morning. And we could have given him money for food. But he broke into the place and I, I think he's in jail. I don't know. I didn't follow up with him. But. So, the, what I'm saying is, Jesus loves people and that is why he came. And then we should show the same love to people. What about the thief on the cross? Forgive him. Forgive the thief on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. Those are examples for, for us. And because we have been forgiven, we need to forgive others too. Say we need to forgive others too. We need to forgive others. There are a lot of people carrying animosity against people. Christians against Christians. In the same church, not speaking to the, with each other. It's, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, cousins or whatever, somebody offended you. There's nothing that people can do to us that they didn't do to Christ. They nailed him on the cross, but on the cross, what did he say? Father, do what? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. So we should be forgiving people too. If you have received forgiveness, then you should be able to give forgiveness. If you, it's people who have not received forgiveness that don't, that sh can't forgive. They will tell you, I can't forgive that man. Yeah, it's true. But if you are a Christian, because of the example Christ has shown, and not only Christ, remember Stephen? Stephen, they were stoning him. And the Bible says he knelt down and cried aloud. Say, Father, don't count this sin against them. Meaning, Father, forgive them. I have forgiven them. And Jesus Christ stood up in the throne. He saw, he saw Christ stand up. To receive his spirit, to receive him. What if Stephen had been, I mean, had been cursing them? You people, it's no good better for you. <laughs> what if he was saying that? Will Christ stand up? He would have gone to heaven in bitterness. So let's imbibe these. There are so there are many more. We we'll probably finish in Bible study, but for today, we will, we will stop there. Uh, let me just read to, he came to show us the Father. He came to show us 
the Father, what God is like. The Bible says no, no one has seen God before, but Jesus Christ came and manifested him. If you saw the kindness of Jesus Christ, the compassion of Jesus Christ, he went about healing people, he went about feeding people, supplying people's needs, he went about loving people. That is showing God. And if we are his God's children, we should be doing the same thing. Showing, being compassionate with people, loving them, showing the love of God with them, being kind to people, and go about healing people. Go about healing people. Said, as he is in this world, so are we. As Jesus Christ is, so are we. We're not different from him because his spirit is in us. And remember, he says that the works that I do, shall you do also? Whoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall we? How many of us are doing his work? How many of us want to do his work? How many of us think that we can do his work? But those are the challenges that we have, that we must bring ourselves up. He came to show us the Father. And then he came to do the will of the Father. Remember, until the end he said, not my will, but your will be done. It was difficult, but he still chose to do the will of the Father. So we must always choose to do, to do the will of the Father. He said that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must always be in the will of the Father. He came to destroy and re rescue us from the enemy. He came to destroy and to rescue us from the enemy. Uh, let me just read one verse popular. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know, a lot of scriptures we read, but we don't, we don't believe. He, he came. He incapacitated the devil. And a lot of people still go around and say, devil did this to me, devil did. If you believe that devil did it to you, devil will do it to you. We read one passage, the passage that you pointed out on Sunday. Blessed is he that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were said by the Lord. Blessed is he that does what? That believes. For there shall be a performance of those things that are said by the Lord. If we don't believe, there will be no performance. So you mu we must believe, which is the truth, that it destroyed the works of the devil. It delivered us from the power of darkness. If we don't believe, we will always be in bondage. And that's why many Christians are still in bondage. And that's why people can, are still in bondage. Because they believe, and they call shame. Somebody says, it's my father's wife, it's mine. No, so come off it. Come off it. It destroyed the works of the devil. If you don't believe that, you will be in bondage. Too many people don't believe that. But that's what he did. If you didn't believe that, he came, then he came in vain for you. People will be, in, they will be Christians, but they will suffer. And that's why many people are suffering. We have a big God. There's nothing impossible with him. And so we can, we can tag on with him and have victory and run our life in victory. He redeemed us under the law and made us sons. I will, I will, I will deal with this. I think I will do that in Go to the details in Bible study for those who come. So those are things that we can rejoice about. Those are things that we can be happy about. Those are things, the news that we can carry around. You know, we read the, the, uh, the look that we read, look that we read that last week. That was one, the, the angels that came and brought the joy to the shepherds. And the shepherds went and told the people, let me read, let me look and find it. So that Luke chapter, I think, two. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's let's just read Luke chapter two. Um Actually, it's 18 I'm going to. 
Uh, I want to see where to start. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's read from 15. He said, okay, please read everything when you get home. He said, and it came to pass as the angels were gone. You know, the angels had proclaimed good tidings of great joy to all people. And as they were gone, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made us know, made us, made known to us. They didn't just sit there. They said, let's go confirm it. You hear the word of God, you hear that, they, they, they read the word of God, appropriate it to yourself, believe it, take it, assimilate it, meditate on it until it becomes truth to you, until it becomes revelation to you, until the word becomes flesh to you. And this is what they are saying. Let me, let's go and see if this is true. Read the word. Is this true? Find other scriptures that say the same thing. And believe it. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. Not only that, they made, they went and make it known. What, what, what have I been saying before? We need to make Christ know what he has done. And they that had it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Who has NLT? Let's see what that says. They wondered. That means, what are these people saying? Is it, is it the truth? All over mm -hmm. the story were they were astonished. And they stopped as being astonished. They didn't go to look. They didn't go to proclaim. And how many Christians live that way? They are just astonished. They say, God do miracles. Ah, they say, is this true? Does God still do miracles today? But that's where they're living. They never experience it. Let's come to experience Christ. Let's come to experience all that he has done for us. Let's know them and let's rejoice about them. Let's proclaim them. Let's embrace them. Blessed is he that believes, for there shall be a performance of those things that are said by the Lord. The performance of the word of God only comes to those that believe. Let's just thank God for Jesus Christ, for sending Jesus Christ. Let's thank God for Christmas. Let's thank God for he sent his son. God became flesh. Let's thank God that he became flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ, he dwelt among us. We beheld his glory as the glory of only the beginning.